Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. <clears throat> so I hope you all liked uh, last week's show uh, with my friends Christian and Laurelin. Um, I had a lot of fun hanging out with them. Um, last time you'll ever see me in a tank top, I guarantee you that. Not flattering on me. Um, but I had a great time with them and I uh, um, hope you all had a great time You know, having people that you know, just are ordinary drinkers. You don't have like the snooty psalm spitting wine and blah, uh, and you know, the wines are, I like different, like the underwood wines, barefoot wines are fun and interesting, not interesting, but they're fun, like easy drinking wines. Uh, if uh, that's what you're looking for, they're perfect size, you know, basically a glass worth um, in plastic. So um, same thing with the underwood, you, know, you get a couple glasses of wine out of the deal and uh, in, a, in a pool friendly format. And uh, I think it's the first time we had beer on the show. So, uh, yeah, uh, good time was had by all, at least we did. Um, as you can see, I don't have the green screen going on. There's the, uh, oops, there's, uh, there we go. There's the, uh, I guess so. Yeah, I guess it is directly behind me. There's the, the wine cellar you can't really see inside because when I first got the wine cellar, um, it, the glass was facing this way, and then I realized if I ever did an episode like this, these lights would just reflect really badly. You would you'd be a mirror, and you would see what I see. So um, we s turned it so that it doesn't do that. Um, it actually gave me more room because it's 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 not as it's um, deeper than it is wide. So it makes it easier to put the green screen up. But I'm trying to get a few episodes done real quick. I think I'm gonna do five today. Um, that gets me into like mid-August so that I'm pretty much recovered and I'm not having to like try to do this and all that. Um, what else? Uh, I'm doing the phone now because um, the camera, the camera's still set up. I mean, there's, as you've probably seen the past, I don't know, like quite a few episodes that I've done with the video camera, there's these little glitches that show up in the like top part of the screen. And um, I'm also having a hard time with the syncing of audio and video. It's just, it, the video is just really choppy. It's not because my computer is slow or anything, it's plenty fast, but Apple did something with the, um, um, the file format for video that Canon uses and a lot of people use um, for video cameras. And uh, so I'm trying to do this with the phone, but I'm also experimenting with, um, I've got the, uh, the thing here, the audio recorder and the, um, uh, the file format for the audio because that's not syncing up either but I thought I had all of it set so the last episode I had to do some magic so that at the very end of everything we our lips synced with the audio um, trying to see what else to talk about from that episode that, that, that's gonna be it um, I have a lot of wines that uh, most of the wines we're reviewing this in this group of episodes I did pay for uh, there is one more set of free wines uh, samples that were sent to me uh, by Kate and Jane from Creative Palette that I completely just hosed and forgot about. So um, uh, we're going to do that in a little bit because they're red wines. And uh, so that's a couple episodes down. But uh, yeah, let's do it. And I'm rocking my Jari shirt. Saw him in Dallas and Houston in April. All right, uh, let's get into this wine real quick. Uh, this is still pretty chill because I, I pulled it out of the, um, out of the cellar about... 15 minutes ago, I guess. So I probably should have, I probably should have like pulled them out about an hour ago. Uh, but this is a white wine, so it, it'll be closer to serving temperature, kind of, um, you know, once I get into it. But this is the, um, this is the uh, Matthew Cosme uh, Les Pomerards, Prom Promenards, Promenards. The, the script is kind of hard to read for me. Uh, Les Promenards. Uh, a Vouvray. So uh, this is a Chenin Blanc. 2016 is the vintage. Um, I paid, uh, it came from Somme Select and uh, it was $26 and then when you add the shipping and the um, insurance, whatever, for build a case is which how I do Psalm Select, I suggest you do that, uh, came out to $27.89 total. So uh, not by any means an expensive wine, but this is not a $10 bottle of wine. All right, um, so a little, little um, background. So uh, Vouvray is in the Loire Valley of France. Uh, Loire Valley is like this, so this is the Atlantic coast. It kind of starts or ends really 
and it just kind of goes like this, somewhat in the northern northern part of France. I, mean, I think it's like a couple hours south of Paris, at least by train, maybe by car. Not, I don't remember. I remember passing through it. I remember being about two hours out, out, outside of Paris. Um, and then the rest of the tr train tra trip was like another three hours to Bordeaux. Anyway, so it kind of just goes like this and then goes zoop, south. Um, anyway, so the Loire Valley is somewhat kind of in that middle area. Um, and they, uh, well, Vouvray, I'm sorry, Vouvray, Loire, the whole part. Vouvray is somewhere in that kind of middle-ish area. Um, you've got Sancerre, Vouvray, kind of somewhat neighbors. Um, but they do a uh, Chenin Blanc and Bouvray, and they make they make everything from bone dry, which is what this wine is supposed to be, uh, to sweet uh, Chenin Blanc. Um, so you can have all types of uh, uh, styles of that, and uh, it's a very refreshing grape uh, wine, so to speak. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, Matthew Cosme, um, his family's been uh, growing grapes, uh, or actually they were making. Yeah, so the, the, the estate-owned vines have been farmed by his family since 1930. Um, he got into uh, being a winemaker. He took over the estate in 2005, but before he did that, he trained at Domaine Hewitt, uh, which is a very well-known Vouvray uh, winery. Uh, he does practice biodynamic and organic farming, so um, he does everything he can do to avoid any type of what they call sides, um, C-I-D-E. Uh, like pesticide, fungicide, herbicide, those types of things. So try to get rid of those, not use those. Um, uh, hand harvesting uses horses to uh, plow the field, plow the vineyards and all that. So tries to be as natural, I don't want to say it was natural, but as biodynamic and organic as possible. Um, I, I don't remember if it says it. Yeah, he is certified organic and biodynamic on the farming. Um, let's see what else. Uh, it's aged in... Um, uh, okay, so sorry. The fully ripe grapes are harvested by hand, and fermentation via indigenous yeast occurs in 400 liter oak barrels. And then the wine ages in these vessels for 10 months before bottling. So, 400 liters is not quite twice the size as a standard Bordeaux barrel. Or they're 200, those are 225 liters. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's anything else on here to talk about. Nope. Anyway, I'm excited to try the wine. Boom. I think it was on the on the Corvin website where they were showing to how to do this, and and the person just like lifts it up instead of holding this. But I swear, when I first got the Corvin, they said to hold it. I don't know. Let's just get into the wine. Let's go back to the thing here to make sure it's all working, all on, doing its thing. Go on, connect. There we go. So on the nose. Um, you notice I'm wearing glasses. These are actually my new glasses, um, somewhat new. They're okay. Um, the problem is I didn't get the anti-glare coating and all that like my other set of glasses, and um, so you might see some glare. But I had no intention of wearing glasses ever for my show, so that's why I didn't get them. Um, they're supposed, really supposed to be like backup glasses or glasses I wear when I'm not working, uh, taking the day off. But uh, I, I definitely, I think, push the contacts that I wear. Um, a little too hard, not hard, but I probably wore them for slightly longer. I don't wear them like, I don't keep them in like all the time. Like I don't sleep with them every day and all that, but I probably wore them for a few more weeks than I probably should have. I was trying to extend the life of that pair of contacts so I didn't open up a new fresh set like two weeks before my operation. And then, cause these contacts I have are very expensive. Anyway, so and I have I don't really need to wear my contacts this week, but I'm wearing my glasses the past couple of days. So on the nose, <clears throat> I mean I know I wore my contacts for the show, for for the episode because I was trying to not use my glasses, but 
So on the nose, there's, there's a touch of waxiness to it, um, a touch of yellow apple, uh, peach. Um, even, I won't even say there's even a little bit of rubber on it. Yeah. Um, even though it's aged in oak, um, these are very likely, you know, used. They're not like new oak type of thing. So it's not like, um, yeah, they're large neutral barrels, it says. <clears throat> so it's really more for the oxidation of it than, than anything else. A, a little bit of white flowers, um, but on the nose, it's not, it's not highly aromatic. <clears throat> so there's really not a lot going on on the nose. Let's just get right into the, into the wine. So on the palate, definitely dry. This is a definitely very, like, as it said already in your bone dry expression of Chenin Blanc. Um, it's just refreshing. It's very acidic. Um, Acidity is very high. It's not as laser sharp down the center tongue, but it does coat the tongue. Um, you get a little tartness <clears throat> of the fruit. Um, that could also be just the acid really just ripping, rippingly high. Um, but it's, um, the peach is there. It's like, like a really tart or very acidic peach. Um, it's a, it, because it's such a highly acid thing, there's that natural inclination to say there's like a lemon and lime, but more, more lemon citrus type of thing going on. Um, I don't really get that rubber or waxiness on, on the palate. There's a touch of a spicy component to it. Um, a little bit of vegetal, I guess. Um, it's not, so it's not a highly complex wine on the palate. I really feel the acid is what, what you pay attention to the most. But if you let the wine sit in your mouth, um, you start getting, a, a, I won't call it richness, but a little bit more like flavors going on. touch of orange that type of stuff it's definitely a very refreshing wine if you're in the middle of summer uh, somewhere and you want something to you know a little porch pounder type of thing this is it um, I am gonna look at their at their <laughs> their tasting notes because I want to see if I'm if I'm just flat out missing something here um, white peach lime zest honeydew apricot yellow apple Mm, lemon blossoms, okay, white flowers, crushed rock and wet wool. I, you know, wet wool is like this big marker for Shannon Block, and for some reason, I don't get it all the time. So I'm not sure if there's just something I'm missing out of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I get, I get about half of what they say. I'm not saying that that's not in there and that they're making it up, um, but sometimes certain things on wine mask or or you, your your body your palate pays attention to certain things you key in on it and so you might miss other things it's a very refreshing wine uh, i like it a lot uh, i'm looking forward to drinking it later um as in in a couple months when it's unfortunately won't be a hot it won't be a won't be like a great time to drink it but um it really just kind of depends on my medication you know at this point well while you're watching this i'm Recovering, so I don't know what kind of medication I'm doing and how, what, how much I can drink, if if anything. So that's why I'm recording all these now, so I don't have to worry about that. It, it's pretty good. I like it. Um, yeah. So if you want a really refreshing, dry Vouvray, um, it's not terribly expensive. 
you might be able to find Vouvray's for a little bit less um, that are going to give you a, pre, uh, a fairly similar profile, uh, similar enjoyment. So, but this is someone that's you know practicing uh, some biodynamic uh, farming and is really trying to uh, be a good steward to, to the earth. So, there, so you know, it might be a good idea to maybe uh, help support this guy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very tasty wine. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you drink it. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode. As always, you can click the links above to friend me up when I do check in. Uh, you can click the links below uh, for information about the winery. Uh, you can send me a few ducats because that would be really appreciated. And um, we'll see everyone again next time.